Let's have a conversation. Christine Quinn is with me. She is the former speaker for New York City Council. And Steve Lonigan is a former Republican candidate for the U.S. Senate, and he served as a former New Jersey national director for Ted Cruz's campaign. Great to have both of you on. Thank you. you know, Thank you. I, I want to start on the parade, and we had talked to two veterans last hour, and I was asking you in commercial, you said both of your fathers served in the military. Chris, just starting with you, um, do you think it is a great idea, honor our military, have a parade, or too much of a Trump show. Well, I'll quote my father, Larry Quinn, 91, World War II veteran in the Navy. He thinks it's ridiculous, a waste of money. Obviously, he believes, and I believe with him, that there's victories to celebrate. They should be celebrated, and Veterans Day should be a sacrosanct day. But the president clearly called for this parade because he had fun in France, because he liked watching all of the big guns and troops parade in front of, me, in front of him. This really smacks of the president liking the way the North Korean leader dictates a little too much. This seems about Donald Trump and making sure everyone knows he has the biggest button and not about veteran sacrifices. What do you think, Steve? Uh, well, well, I think coming out of New York City, which gives America the biggest military parade every single year called Fleet Week, where we parade our United States Navy up the Hudson River and thousands and tens and hundreds of thousands of people from around the world come and enjoy seeing that, there's no reason we can't honor our military in Washington, D.C. as well. We might as well show off what a great job the president is doing of rebuilding the American military after eight years of Barack Obama, of sequestration, of demoralization of our military strength. It's on the mend. It's getting stronger every day. The world knows it. Why not show off? Why not show off to our military how proud we are of them? But I think Steve just told the truth of what this parade is about showcasing what Republicans believe is Donald Trump's successes. That's very different than Fleet Week, which is a long-standing tradition to give our men and women of the Navy and the Marines a break and a celebration. A long-standing parade, you. Christine. A long-standing parade. It's actually more of a gathering than a parade Fleet Week, but long-standing, yes, as opposed to this. And that's about the men and women. As you said, Steve, this, the parade the president is proposing would be about saluting the president's so-called good work. Political, serving and supporting military. It's Very saluting different. the greatness of our military have sacrificed so much in this long-standing effort in the Middle East, losing men and women every single year. I mean, enough is enough. Let's tell the world we have the most powerful, powerful military on the but, planet Earth, and they should stand down from coming after us. I don't think people, need a, people shouldn't need a parade that salutes the president, as, it, as you said, the president's so-called success, as I added so-called, to know the Amer that America is the greatest might morally and militarily in the world. We're losing that posture and that position and people seeing us that way because of the president's behavior. Our That's military is be getting about. stronger every day. We're rebuilding our military forces. ISIS is disintegrating because of this military. Their morale is being reboosted after being demoralized under Barack Obama and his sequestration efforts. And it's it's about time we showed the world what we're made of. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me jump in. Hang on. The world doesn't know. You, you think me, the world knows. Let me jump I in. I we heard from, let's listen to the Secretary of Defense who jumped into the White House press briefing and offered this when asked about it. As far as the parade goes, again, uh, the president's uh, respect, his, uh, his fondness for the military, I think is reflected in him asking for these options. We've been uh, putting together some options. We'll send them up to the White House uh, for decision. Had a general on last hour who pointed out uh, more of the, the, the sect def is, def's sort of reticence. He didn't go on and on, which he thought spoke volumes. He was of your camp saying, listen, if we're if our military is a bunch of badasses, pardon, uh, we don't need to show the world. We just know we are. That, that said also, let me add one more piece of sound. This is a Republican Senator Lindsey Graham. He weighed in as well. I'm not looking for a Soviet-style hardware display. That's not who we are. It's kind of cheesy and I think shows weakness, quite frankly. But have a parade where you can display our finest and we can all say thank you and honor them would be fine. I'd like to see kids marching. I'd like to honor military families. Okay, I just wanted to get uh, mm. those voices in the conversation as well. Let's let's move on to our former vice president, Joe Biden, who was here at CNN last night. He was on with Chris Cuomo and offered this when it comes to the president. I just, I, I just marvel at some of the things he says and does. Like, what, two days ago, anybody didn't stand up and clap for him was un-American and then maybe even treasonous? I they mean, say it was tongue-in-cheek. Democrats can't take a joke. Well, let me tell you, he's a joke. Steve, that's, that's been the headline coming from, I mean, coming uh, from our coming former from vice president, 
<laughs> calling the president a joke. Coming from a guy who plagiarized an entire speech from the British Labor Secretary, Daniel Kness, and people seem to forget, you got to question who the joke is. Um, I think Biden is irrelevant. Nobody cares what he has to say. And the president, again, wow. is presiding over the greatest economy we've seen in decades, the rebuilding of our American military, great economic growth, great stock market growth, despite little recent corrections, and, and a future economy that's going to be second to none over the last 30 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, uh, bringing up the speech from the Labor Secretary is really having to reach back in history to criticize Joe Biden. You learn from and history. And I think though. you do, yeah. but Joe Biden has moved on and served this country well. And I think if you look at recent polling on the former vice president, it shows that many, many Americans care what he has to say and what he thinks. But let's stop for a second. Mm -hmm. There's all of this upsetness that Joe Biden has said this about the president. Let's remember all of the horrible things that Donald Trump said and did regarding President Obama's citizenship. He, in essence, called him an illegitimate American citizen, constantly, disrespectfully, and demeaningly demanding his birth certificate, leading the so-called birthers movement. You want to talk about somebody being disrespectful to the President of the United States and to the office of the presidency? It is our present president, Donald Trump, not Joe Biden, a man who's dedicated his life to service to this country. Well, and I, his family has sacrificed in the light of that. I hope Joe Biden runs for president so Donald Trump can beat him and send him into retirement once and for all. Well, if that's the pair, I don't think that will be the outcome. Oh. Stephen Chris, we'll leave it. Thank right. you so much. Thank you. Appreciate both of you. <laughs>